the uh, psychologist on staff is Dr. Bob Wilson, and he works closely with a rehab counselor who also does daily visits as needed because there's a lot of problems with anxiety and depression whenever a person has pulmonary problems, so we want to focus on those and be able to help with relaxation. We have a relax relaxation therapy class that meets daily and teaching techniques that a person can help to overcome the anxiety that comes when you're having trouble breathing. So it's an important piece. As we say, the entire body is looked at. The dietitian also helps with nutrition because it's in important to be able to keep your body well nourished in order to be able to avoid any complications you might have with your pulmonary um, diagnosis. If you have, uh, um, if you're malnourished, you are t prone to be able to, or prone to developing other complications. You'll possibly get pneumonia or you just immunosuppressed and not being able to fight off other infections. So it's important to have a good, uh, good diet on a daily basis as well. So we look at the entire person, and then once a person's ready for discharge, after an average length of stay runs around 15 days, uh, once someone's ready for discharge, we look at possibly what other things do they need for going home. Do you need outpatient therapy, home health therapy, and being able to make sure that you are ready to go home uh, and be able to hopefully avoid hospitalizations in the future because one of the other big components we offer is an education program for our patients because we know the in order to prevent a hospitalization you need to know all about your medications the nutrition that you need and be able to continue your home exercise program because it's extremely important because if we teach you these things going home afterwards it's important to maintain that process otherwise you're going to have a, a drastic decline and and don't want to have you back into the hospital again afterwards. So. Well, uh, I think you've, we've already heard from me, but um, I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, I, I know they're being passed forward. Did you want me to say? Oh, okay. Um, Mike and Krista uh, Shore are here. Uh, we're happy to have them. And uh, Mike just had a lung transplant. Uh, I'll let them uh, speak for themselves. Uh, they're better at it than I am. Uh, so uh, thanks for coming again. Well, I had my transplant January 4th of this year. Um, I went through the rehab program that's offered here at St. Mary's, and um, it was an excellent program. Uh, they were very encouraging. I'm kind of allergic to these things, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to get too close to it. Um, the program here was excellent. Um, it probably extended my life quite a bit until the point of transplant. Uh, whenever I got my phone call for my transplant, I was on 22 liters of oxygen, and I was still exercising the day before. Um, I would ride the bike for six miles every day. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I came here, and on top of that, I'd walk the treadmill um, for 30 minutes, lift weights, and do 200 crunches. Now, I say that not to brag by any means, but the day I left the hospital, the doctor told me that if I wouldn't have been in such good shape, I would have never survived uh, the time. When I had my transplant uh, January 4th, uh, everything went great. I was supposed to get a double lung transplant and received a single. Um, was out of ICU in 24 hours, or a day and a half, and they were gonna, I had the transplant on a Sunday, and they were gonna send me home on a Thursday. And they couldn't get the paperwork together quite fast enough, so they said, we'll just send you home Friday morning. And Friday morning, about three o'clock in the morning, I started getting sick, had some trouble with the medicine, um, side effects of that, and one thing led to another, and, I came home about five months later. Um, I had about everything go wrong 
that could possibly go wrong. Um, I had a, um, a Nissen wrap surgery during that time, and the exercise that I did, uh, the six minute walk test uh, up in Indianapolis, the record was 1,100 feet, and whenever I did it, I walked 1,650 feet. Um, so everything went as good as planned. Um, I'm doing great. I'm back to walking two miles a day, riding a bike six miles a day, lifting weights and doing 200 crunches again. So. And my name is Krista Shore. Um, this is my husband, Mike. Three and a half years before his lung transplant, when he was diagnosed with, with IPF, um, we, we didn't think he would survive um, three years. He had about three and a half years due to his um, exercise therapy program and some wonderful doctors. Um, we went through Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis for his lung transplant. Um, the one thing that we saw once everything was said and done is there's a real need for the support group, a support program. There weren't a lot of people that we could draw from as far as people to talk to and help us through the situation, which is part of why Mike and I are involved in this. We've had a chance to talk to a lot of other recipients and people who are on the waiting list. It's a really difficult process, but as you can see, you know, even eight months later, Mike's surviving. He would not have lived past March, we know that. Um, so we've got some time, and that's been a wonderful gift. Okay, this question is for Mike. Um, as a possible transplant patient, I would like to know if you think a transplant is worth it and would you do it again? Yes and yes. Um, probably the most obvious is your options just aren't very good. It's not like if you don't do a transplant, you can do this other thing and live forever. Um, when it gets down, when you're down to 22 liters of oxygen, um, just surviving each day is a major thing. Um, to do the exercises, I would do them every day religiously, but towards the end I'd have to go home and go to bed. That was the, the whole meaning of my day, was to make it through exercise and get back home. So most definitely. Yeah, I had, during this time, I've had two grandkids born. I wouldn't miss seeing them for anything. No amount of pain. And actually, the transplant surgery itself wasn't that painful. Now, the other stuff I went through um, was a lot more painful than the actual surgery. The surgery went easy. Um, I would do it over and over again. I still have one diseased lung. My left lung is still infected with IPF. Um, and the hope is the lung I got on the right side is a very small lung. And if I have trouble with it, we can always do another transplant on the left. And I would definitely do it, without a doubt.